it stink, y'all. I wish y'all could smell it. I found a little press thing that I machined a while back. It don't matter anyway, because I'm going to blow this tin bolt up before that even matters. Yes, indeed. We moving along nicely, yo. Hey, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you new here. Because, bro, I'm trying to help people out. Sometimes make people laugh. Once this thing's done, I want to do hellacious burnouts with it and go to the drag strip. What's up, y'all? In today's video, I'm going to be showing y'all how to build an 8.5 or 8.6-inch GM Timbo rear end. Let's get to it. Today's example, I'm going to be using my 2002 Suburban. We putting together this rear end with parts from Quick Performance. Go ahead and check them out. They sell all the parts you're going to need to rebuild these rear ends and more. They sell complete for 9 inches, whatever you want. Check them out. Let's go ahead. Let's start off with this. First step to building any good rear end is to take them wheels off. Let's go ahead and take them off. All right, y'all. For the next step, after y'all get those wheels off, grab yourself an 18 millimeter wrench and get this caliper out of the way. Caliper has to come out of the way and rotors got to come out of the way because these are C-clip axles, y'all. And once we put, pull them C-clips, Axle's got to slide out so you can pull that chunk out the center of the rear end. So let's just take a moment and bop these off. Just got two bolts in the back, take it off. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to be back with y'all later. This ain't no brake job, baby. This a rear end rebuild. I'm going to holler at y'all. All right, y'all. Now that we got the calipers and rotors off, Let's lift this thing up and check out what we got to take off underneath to pop that back cover off the rear end. Looks like we got to get the sway bar out of the way. And it also looks like we got to get the, uh, the pan hard bar. And then we can pop that cover off. Take a walk on the wild side with me, yo. Yeah? All right, y'all. Now that we got this thing raised up, you're going to need a three-quarter wrench and an 18-millimeter socket with a zut to get this sway ball. Once these end links are undone, then you can get your 10 millimeter with a wrench or impact and take those out and it should come out of place. And you can set it to the side. she do that now we can go ahead and get this get it out of you bolts with some crawl first yeah because nine times out of ten this stuff rusted and i'm in south louisiana so my stuff's pretty good but if y'all live in a rust belt peace be with you and with your spirit all right y'all next thing we're gonna take off is these little clips that hold the park brake cable they just snap on there. Get yourself a big screwdriver and pry it off. Of it. You might have to work at it a little bit, yeah. All right, now we can get the pan hard bar out of the way. 21 millimeter wrench. 
21 millimeter sock here. Man, they sure do have a lot of stuff you gotta take off just to rebuild the rear. Ow! Man! All right, y'all. Make sure y'all got your hand on it before y'all pull a bolt. Or you're going to knock your titties off. All right, now we're going to go ahead and pull this cover off the back. 13 millimeter socket. stink y'all I wish y'all could smell it We'll put this in my parts washer. Get some of that sticky icky out of there, yeah. All right. We gotta pull this little bolt and pull that pin out, yeah. All right, grab yourself a 6.560 socket. So you don't strip it. You can get this thing out of here. All right. And your pin should follow it. Now you're gonna wanna see your spider gears. And look, what you're gonna do is, you go push that axle in and, and watch this. See that C-clip? See it just fell out? You gotta get that out of there. C-clip. Pull your axle. C clips out, pull your axe off. Alright, y'all, now that the C clips are pulled and both axles are slid out, grab yourself a 5 S and remove your caps. Get them out your way. Those are what holds this carry in and hold your bearings in place. Come on, man. Sometimes they come out, sometimes you gotta pry them, yeah? Of course, this one, I'm gonna have to fight it. All right, not too bad. Huh? Ah, there you go. 
I'll go. They out. Put that in my parts washer. Y'all make sure y'all keep track of y'all stock shims. Might be able to reuse them. Of course you gotta do all your checks, but it's good to start with what came out of that. You know what I'm saying? Driver side, passenger side. I don't wanna mix them up because one does look thicker. All right, now that y'all got everything else torn down, you're gonna go ahead and grab your impact with an inch and a quarter socket to get this pinion nut on. Comes off relatively easy, y'all. Y'all might need to either use a puller or tap this with a hammer to get this uh, yoke off of here. All right, got the puller set up. See if we can get this thing off of here. Pull your opinion out. Lip seal out and a band. All right, next step, we gotta knock the inner racers out of there. Gonna be using a long homemade punch like this, y'all. Yeah. Pinion race is out. All right, y'all. So at this point in time, we have a completely torn down 8.6 inch GM 10 ball rear end. I'm gonna give y'all a little walk around right quick of it, fully disassembled. And while I, while y'all wasn't looking, I went ahead and mic those two shims. Driver side was 0.242, and passenger side was. 0 0.240 so they are different y'all 2000s can make a big difference when it's when it's coming to backlash and all that so just keep in mind don't mix max them shim do said mix max miss match those shims all right y'all let me give y'all a little walk around right quick That's how it looks when your axles are out. You got your axle bearing and seal. You got your housing where your front bearing goes for your pinion. All right, y'all. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean everything up so we can come back together with it. All right, y'all, these are all the parts that I got from Quick Performance to rebuild this thing. 
I got a USA standard gear rebuild kit with a new nut, gasket, new bearings, ring gear, bolts, paste, thread locker, the whole nine yards. Uh, eating true track, which is beautiful, gonna allow for them smoky burnouts. Parts for that. Once you put the C clips in, you gotta put this ring on there and all that. 410 gears, 1350 yoke, a new lip seal. And just and just in case y'all are wondering, here's the part numbers from them. There y'all go. All right, just wanted to show y'all that. Let me go ahead and go get this thing cleaned up. And I'm going to holler back at y'all. All right, y'all. I cleaned everything off. Brake cleaner, blew all the bolts out, clean this off, clean that shipping all off of the bolts, put a little red Loctite on them. Let's go ahead and get this thing on here. Remember y'all, left-handed treads on these. Go ahead and start all your bolts. They got a boss fit right there, so you might have to just use a wrench to bring it up and get these two faces seated properly. Let's go ahead and bring this over there to the press. All right, y'all, go ahead and set your torque wrench to 65 foot-pounds. We're going to go ahead and torque our ring bolts. Remember, y'all, left-handed trades. Sixty-five foot pounds with some red Loctite, yeah. I just like to put a little mark on them just to have a little peace of mind, you know. That's what I like. All right, now I'm gonna press this bearing on with a socket, a flat plate. stop <clears throat> must be because the carrier is flush yep I need to find something that fits the bearing that goes over that I might have made something a while back <laughs> all right 
I found a little press thing that I machined a while back. That's it, y'all, it's flush. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other band, and then I'm gonna holler at y'all later. All right, y'all, so we got the carrier built. Ring gears on, bolts are torque to spec. We got the new bearings on. I gotta go tear apart the OG pinion so I can get that shim out of the, that factory, whatever, 30,000 shim or whatever under there so I can build that new pinion. Yes, indeed. We moving along nicely, y'all. Hey, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you new here. Because, bro, I'm trying to help people out. Sometimes make people laugh. Once this thing's done, I want to do hellacious burnouts with it. Go to the drag strip. Even though this is the drag car. But this will have to do for a little while. With the car seats with the carbon fiber. Alright y'all, so about the hardest yesterday. I was able to get that bearing off of the old pinion. Get that shim off of that. So now I can build the new pinion with the new bearing. I got this thing cleaned out, honed this back thing so it seal off real good, flushed it out. So we should be ready to go back with this thing. First thing I want to do though is I want to drive the new races in here. Remember y'all saw me knock them out yesterday? I got a hammer the new ones in with my same little punch all deal. Let me go ahead and do that. Alright y'all, sorry about that stupid dog barking, but we got to go ahead and knock these races back in here. Let me go ahead and show y'all how I do that. I'm just going to use the old Baron race. To just get me started. You gotta make sure it's all the way bottomed out, y'all. And typically you'll know when it's all the way in. Cause you punch, it'll like kind of bounce back at you. See how it's bouncing back at me? This side's done. Let me go ahead and do the other side right quick. And I'm going to holler back at y'all. Alright, y'all. Now that we got both the pinion races knocked in there, we can go ahead and put that new, uh, new baron on the pinion. Alright, y'all. So, this is my shim that I took off the original 373 pinion. It mics 32 thousandths. I'm going to reuse it because typically the OE shim is correct. Just wipe this, make sure there's no... Put that shim. Drop your bearing on. See how I got it. Now let's go set this thing up in the press and press this bearing on it. All right, y'all, let's press it on.
All right, y'all, whenever you start to notice a little tension on your, on your press, you know it's all the way down. There y'all go. Baron's pressed on it. Alright y'all, so what I was doing just then with that grinder was making a dummy baron so I don't have to damage my actual good baron when I'm testing all this stuff out and setting tooth contact and backlash. So as y'all can see, this is the old baron that came off of it. I made it a slip fit so I could just take it on and off. Normally what I do is make a Normally, I would also make a dummy baron for the inner baron, but kind of slipped my mind. This is the actual baron I'm using with the shim, so fingers crossed that it's going to be correct because then I'd have to go to Napa or something and buy me a new baron because I'm going to have to destroy that one to get it off and reshim that penny. But all in all, this makes it a lot easier. I won't even put the... Uh, crush collar in there. I'm just going to tighten it by hand, let it feel good, put my ring and pinion in there. I mean, put my carrier and my ring gear in there, check everything. If everything looks good, I'll take it back apart, put the actual baron that belongs on it, put my lip seal, and we rocking and rolling, bit. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. Right, so, I'm going to go ahead and slip Slip my pinion in with my dummy baron. I'm going to put my yoke on and just tighten it a little bit, just enough to feel something. See if I can see if I can sneak up on it with my impact. That's good enough right there, y'all. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and slap it in. Watch y'all fingers now. They got weight to this thing. Make sure y'all got y'all bearing in and out of races in there. Cups and cones, whatever you wanna call them. I'm gonna put the shims that came out of it just to for start, for reference. Probably a lot easier with two hands, y'all, but as y'all can see, I only got one hand. Two hands, but you know what I'm saying. Four hands. One hand, two hands, four hands, three hands.
put this cap on so nothing falls out of here. Right now, feels like they have a little too much backlash, but this shear man all the way in, so. Well, I like that because if I have to barely tap this shim in, that means it's setting the preload on these bearings, right? If this shim fell in there, then you know you have no preload on these bearings. You want a little bit of uh, right? You know what I'm saying? Want a little bit of uh, uh. Want a little bit of uh, uh. <laughs> Stupid. Y'all, we might be on the money, bruh. That feels perfect for backlash. Put the other cap on. See how they got the little thing right there to the side that holds that shim from falling up. Just a tech tip. Got to torque that to 60 right quick. All right. Let me get my dial indicator, y'all, so we can check backlash. All right, y'all. I went and get my indicator. I set it up on this bolt right here. Make sure it's not contacting nothing else. And I'm getting right at 11th thou backlash. These gears didn't come with any kind of specifications in reference to a little book. But judging by online, everybody that builds these says their gears specify 8 to 12. So guess what? I'm going to call 11 a win, y'all. I'm going to check a few different spots. And after that, I'm going to put the uh, compound on these gears and check tooth contact. <laughs> All right, y'all. So I put some marking compound on it. Let's see what happens. Y'all gotta remember, everything's dry right now, so. There's no oil in anything, so remember that. Oh yeah, y'all, I like that dry pattern. Check out our coast. Oh yeah, 50-50, yeah? Let me give y'all a close-up. All right, y'all. That's close. Y'all can see it's like right in the center, slightly in. That's drive. Perfect. And let me show y'all in the book, y'all. Check us out. I don't know, y'all. I would say we close to right here. Acceptable patterns. I would say we right at the center of the drive and right at the center on the course. Drop a comment if y'all think it looks good, y'all. Y'all would let that ride. Ooh I'm going to let it eat. 11 backlash with that? I'm going to ride this puppy. <laughs> it don't matter anyway because I'm going to blow this 10 bolt up before that even matters. All right, y'all. So now that I got everything checked, let me go ahead and pull this stuff back out. Install the actual bearing I'm gonna use, install a lip seal, and we're gonna we're gonna go from there. Well, uh, got it out, forgot to hit the record button, but a little pry action got it right out. Ah! 
didn't have to persuade it much, y'all. Let me not mix that up. Let me go put that somewhere else. All right, y'all, we're gonna go ahead and assemble this thing. Install your new crush washer or crush sleeve, whatever you wanna call it. I put a light coat of all on my bearings just so I don't crank up dry, y'all. And when I say crank up, I just mean first movement. All right, I typically use the old nut to push that baron and all that on. And then after I put my lip seal and all that, I put the my final nut on because these nuts are really one time only use, y'all. I know people reuse them, but I try not to when I can. And I, and I got another one, so we just gonna use this one to run this baron on. All right, y'all. I gotta set the crush sleeve after, but I forgot to tell y'all, now you gotta pull this off, put your lip seal in, then run it back up, then you can get your, your torque turn, your pinion uh, bearing preload. Y'all, I'm not sure if you even need it, but I put a very thin layer of RTV around the outside where it seals just to give it a little extra help, you know? I think that look good. She's in. She's seated, babies. All right, y'all. I also like to put a little taste of RTV on the spines on the inside right here. And also, a little bit on this washer that covers these splines here just to seal up any all that could leak out the front of this thing. Put a little grease. That that uh that lip seal got grease in it already, yeah. All right, and as y'all can see. See a little bit of that silicone squeezed out? That's gonna seal off nicely. All right, there's that little bit of RTV that I put on that uh that washer. Put that nut on there. Pretty sure I got it all right, look. Starts moving at 20. And when we move it, it's at 18. So 18 inch pounds torque turn. That's perfect. Pinion bearing preload, y'all. Made my little pinion tool so I could torque that thing.
Well, now it's gonna go in full ball. It's gonna go in Willy Wonka. Come on, man. Hit that thing in there. Put this side on there. Torque it down to 60. Still got good backlash. I'm going to be running 85, 140 all in here, y'all, since it's a little higher on the uh, backlash. And since it's going to be a heavy vehicle and it's going to be using a high torque application, I want to give it every fighting chance to survive. So I'm going to put that thick of viscosity all between them. All right, y'all. Bolts are torqued to 60 foot pounds. Let me go ahead and slip my axles back in, put them C clips, and put that little thing in there to hold it. After that, I think I'm gonna cut y'all off because my phone got like 4%, it's about to die. But I feel like y'all gonna get the gist of it. Y'all know how to put the cover on, y'all know how to put y'all swear ball back on. Now, nah, I don't need to show y'all that, you know what I'm saying? But let me get these axles in so I can show y'all bad mamma jammers how that's done. All right, y'all. I put a little grease where the baron and the seal go. Just to kind of help it out. Give it a little lube. Let me go ahead and slip the other axle in, and I'm going to show y'all how to set the uh, C-clips and all that. All right, y'all. Let me set those C-clips right quick. You just push the uh, axle in, get it, and then pull it in. See how I got a little groove cut out for you? Do the same thing on the other side. Push it in, get your clips, pull back. Pull both the axles out. Now they set. Now we gotta go ahead and put that little keeper in there. Go ahead and put this in there. All right. 
See how it goes between the two, two axle ends? Put this in there. Now I gotta put this snap ring in there. Put this snap ring in there. And that's it, y'all. We got a Eaton Detroit True Track installed. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put a little thin layer of RTV and get that cover back on. I'm gonna holler at y'all in a minute. All right, y'all, well, she's back together with a Detroit True Track, a set of 410 gears and some new bearings. This way I'm gonna go ahead and cut y'all off because y'all don't need to watch me install a swear bar and a pan hard bar. But guess what? Next episode, I'm not installing those stock brakes back. We are about to be installing those bare sport rotors and pads. Until next time, all right, y'all, take it easy. Love y'all.